This season begins with Poe and his buddies on a ship heading to England. During the journey, Poe suddenly woke up to a surprising sight. Their ship was surrounded by a thick fog. He freaked out, thinking it was poisonous gas. A lethera assured him it was just regular fog, a sign they were nearing England, getting closer to their mission of destroying the Changjing weapons. Speaking of those weapons, Rukumini remembered her whip and reached for it. But Poe reminded her they had to get rid of these elemental weapons. Lethera added that no one would attack them at sea, but right then, a pirate queen named Foruzan showed up with plans to capture Poe's father, Mr. Ping, whom she called the Soul Reaper. Poe tried explaining to Forozen that his dad wasn't the Soul Reaper, but she called her crew Colin and Wyman and ordered an attack on Poe and his friends. Luckily, Poe and his buddies easily defeated Colin and Wyman, even cornering Forozen. But she had an ace up her sleeve, her pet sea beast, Alice who captured Poe, Mr. Ping, and Luthero with her tentacles. Forozen then told her crew to plunder Poe's ship and got rid of Colin because he talked too much. Before sailing away, she cut their mast to stop Rukmini and Akna from chasing them. But Akna managed to fix the mast, making it stand tall again. Akna asked Rukmini where Forozen might have taken the captured group and Rukmini figured it was probably Candlelight Cove, an island where crafty and ruthless thieves hid from the law. Rukmini and Akna sneaked onto the island pretending to be pirates, while Mr. Ping was taken to a trial where Forozen played the judge. Rukmini and Akna Keeping an eye on things from outside, they were got a surprise when Colin showed up and told them to learn the pirate codes if they wanted to help Mr. Ping. Meanwhile, Poe stepped up to defend his dad in the trial. He also asked Luthera to help because she was good at talking and had a fancy appearance. But then, Feruzan ordered her crew to find Mr. Ping's pirate tattoo. Mr. Ping hit his head, which shocked Poe and Luthera because they had no idea he was once a pirate. Luthera still tried to defend Mr. Ping by mentioning some good things he did, like adopting Poe and feeding hungry people for free. Sadly, the pirates weren't moved by these stories. When Mr. Ping was a pirate, he did some bad stuff that hurt them. But the worst thing he did was 30 years ago when he and Forozen were a fearsome pirate duo. They terrorized the Seven Seas, robbing city after city. They were so unstoppable that not even the English knights could catch them. One night, their fleet of ships sailed right into a trap set by the British. It seemed like someone was deliberately leading them into this mess. The British ships bombarded them heavily and Forozen nearly lost her life. Thankfully, she survived, but she couldn't find Mr. Payne, who had fallen into the sea and disappeared. This left her heartbroken, thinking she had lost her first mate and first love forever. Forozen also shared with Poe that she was once engaged to Mr. Ping before the betrayal. Years later, she learned that Mr. Ping had betrayed her by orchestrating their fleet's defeat by the British. Because of this, she had sentenced Mr. Ping. Meanwhile, one of Feruzan's crew spotted Rukmini and Akna's ship hidden behind a cliff. He hurried to inform the others, and they eventually found Rukmini and Akna in the library. An attack ensued. Colin took on a crew member as big as himself, while Rukmini and Akna used some clever tricks to defeat their opponents, eventually overthrowing them. As for Mr. Ping, he was taken to the square for a beheading sentence. Poe and Luthera tried to save him from this fate, battling against Feruzan and her crew. However, Rukmini stepped in and mentioned a specific pirate code, but this only made things more complicated. Instead of helping Mr. Ping's defense, Rukmini's code required them to participate in the tournament of certain doom against Forozen and her crew. Rukmini then asked Forozen about the tournament rules, but Forozen replied that they could make up the rules as they pleased because she was the island's ruler. Forozen captured Poe and his friends and locked them in iron cages. Mr. Ping tried to persuade Forozen to let them go, but she ignored him. He then reached out to Poe, asking for his hand, but Poe refused. He was still upset about Mr. Ping's past as a pirate who betrayed his friends. Meanwhile, Akna attempted to free herself from the cage using her tools, but she couldn't manage it. Foruzan hushed them and explained the Tournament of Certain Doom consisting of three rounds. Winning just one would grant them freedom. Luther also asked for their belongings back if they won, and Foruzan agreed. However, if Foruzan won, she planned to take revenge on all of them. Poe and Lethera volunteered for the first round, a Colin handcuffed Lethera because he was ordered to arrest her by the Queen of England. This was a mistake because they were about to fight for their lives. Forozen then shows Lethera and Colin as the fighters in the first round, pitting them against two tiny rabbits. Lethera underestimated the rabbits due to their cuteness, but when the fight began, the rabbits surprised them with brutal attacks, making it tough for Lethera and Colin to fight back. Meanwhile, Rukmini managed to escape from her cage, but instead of helping Poe and the others, she turned the fight into a betting game to make some money. In the end, the rabbits defeated Luthera and Colin, winning the first round. In the next round, Feruzan called upon her toughest crew member, known as the Meat Masher, to be the fighter. 
Meanwhile, Pio, still upset with his father, was sulking and wouldn't listen to Mr. Ping. Firuzin chose Akna as the meat masher's opponent, which immediately sparked protests from Po. He thought it was unfair since Akna was much smaller than the burly meat masher. But Firuzin reminded them that pirates didn't play fair. Mr. Ping tried to guide Akna in the fight because he knew the meat masher's weaknesses. He told Akna that despite the meat masher's size and strength, he was slow. However, Akna had trouble moving quickly because she was a bird. She tried to dodge the meat masher's attacks by flying into the sky. But the crew under Firuzin's command shot at her, forcing her to stay grounded. Akna also attempted to use one of her tools in the fight, but it didn't work. So she followed Mr. Ping's advice to mention the meat masher's mother. When Akna told the meat masher she didn't like his mother, he suddenly stopped and cried in front of her. Apart from turning the fight into a betting event, Rukmini also used the tournament to sell coconut water and Colin took the chance to enjoy a refreshing drink. However, Luther remembered the knights and told Colin to signal them to come and capture the pirates. Colin asked if Luthera would let him capture her friends, but she reminded him that his mission was to capture her, not Poe, and the others. Luthera made a deal with Colin, she'd let him capture her. But in return, he had to ensure the safe passage of Poe and the others to England. Colin agreed and they quietly slipped away while everyone was engrossed in watching Akna's fight against the Meat Masher. Surprisingly, Akna managed to defeat the Meat Masher using her tool, leaving everyone stunned by her victory. Poe and his friends cheered for Akna, even the Meat Masher acknowledged her skills and accepted defeat. But Firuzin was not pleased with this outcome, she tossed Akna aside and declared her the loser. Colin took Luthera to a high spot to light a beacon, a signal to summon the knights to their location. However, they were confronted by one of Firuzin's crew members trying to stop them. Colin, hoping to avoid a fight and keep a low profile, told the pirate they were lovers, but their acting skills were far from convincing. Despite that, Colin and Luthera managed to defeat the pirate and rush to the top of a tall building. Meanwhile, Firuzin chose herself as the fighter in the last round and selected Po as her opponent. Mr. Ping advised Po to fight like a pirate to stand a chance against Firuzin, but Po insisted on fighting his own way because he wasn't a pirate. Surprisingly, Firuzin turned out to be a skilled fighter, repeatedly cornering Po and outsmarting him. Seeing this, Mr. Ping tried to convince Po that he was the most precious thing in his life and being his father was the greatest achievement he'd ever had. When Po heard his father's words, he realized that his dad truly loved him, even though he had been a pirate. This realization boosted Po's confidence and he countered with his signature attack. His strike managed to knock Firuzin down, but she quickly ordered her weapon to release Mr. Ping's cage. Po hurried to rescue his father, launching more attacks until he finally defeated Firuzin. Po and his father reconciled and shared a hug. Firozin, in a rare moment of humility, admitted her defeat and declared Po the winner. She praised Mr. Ping for raising such a strong warrior, greatly impressed by him. As they celebrated their victory, Luthera and Colin reached the highest hill and lit a beacon to summon the knights. The joyful celebration turned into panic when Firozin announced that the knights were coming to arrest them. Chaos ensued as the pirates scrambled to save themselves. Firozin, suspecting Mr. Ping of summoning the knights, drew her sword at him. Mr. Payne tried to explain, but Forozen refused to listen and headed for her ship to escape. Just then, the knights arrived on the island, launching air attacks. Poe and his friends had to find a safe hiding spot to avoid the onslaught. Lethera believed that Forozen had brought the crate with the elemental weapons, but Mr. Ping informed them that Forozen always stashed her loot at the top of the hill. He knew this because he used to be Forozen's first mate, and she hadn't changed her habits even after he left her. Thanks to Mr. Ping's pirate skills and knowledge, they managed to outmaneuver the pirate guards and disable the knights trying to block their way. On the flip side, Colin, still suspicious of Luthera, secretly alerted the knights to Poe and his friend's location by using a flare. Suvim, they reached Firozin's secret stash, rooming with treasure. Oddly, despite the wealth, Firozin had only stationed weak fighters like Wyman to guard the place. After some exploration, they located the crate and Luthera's sword. However, the knights led by Sir Drake arrived shortly after. Sir Drake ordered Luthera to surrender her sword. Poe tried to defend her, but Luthera willingly gave up the sword, explaining that Sir Drake was a family friend. Sir Drake then ordered Luthera's arrest, but Colin explained their agreement to bring her friends to London. Though annoyed that Colin had made a deal with the fugitive, Sir Drake reluctantly agreed and told them to follow him. When they reached the dock, Sir Drake asked Luthera to open the crate, but she acted suspiciously. So Sir Drake used his sword to open it and found helmets and gauntlets inside instead of the elemental weapons. To throw off Sir Drake's suspicions, Mr. Ping explained that the helmet was meant to protect Poe's head, but Colin quickly recognized the gauntlet as a dangerous weapon because it had been used against him before. Colin informed Sir Drake that the gauntlet could cause earthquakes and shoot flames, 
making it highly dangerous. Luthero also chimed in, emphasizing the weapon's danger and the fact that her late brother Alfie had tried to destroy them. However, Sir Drake insisted he had never heard of such a mission and expressed his intent to master the powerful weapons. Poe and Luthera resisted, attacking Sir Drake and the other knights. Once they reclaimed the chest, Pigo and his friends planned to escape but found their ship had sunk. Surprisingly, Feruzan appeared with her pirate fleet offering to help. Poe realized that continuing to fight the knights would lead to loss, so he devised a plan to protect the weapons from Sir Drake. Poe and his father coordinated, and Poe threw Mr. Ping onto Feruzan's ship to carry out the plan. With his precise predictions, Mr. Ping managed to grab the chest from a distance. Colin tried to reach the chest, but was easily knocked down by Ferozen's sea beast. With the chest secured, Mr. Ping left Poe and his friends, promising to protect the weapons until they reunited in London. On the flip side, Sir Drake ordered his knights to arrest Poe and his friends, branding them dangerous criminals in league with the Pirate Queen. Despite his frustration at losing the weapons, Sir Drake had other plans and was confident that this time his plan would succeed. Meanwhile, Mr. Ping found himself reminiscing with Feruzan, enjoying a romantic moment as they talked about their adventurous past. Mr. Ping missed the life of a pirate and, without realizing it, mentioned the crate, piquing Feruzan's curiosity about its contents. A while later, Poe and his friends reached England and continued their journey in wagons, each placed in separate trains. Luther rode in Sir Drake's train as he intended to interrogate her about the weapons. During the journey, Poe managed to overpower one of the knights grabbing the keys and freeing himself. He quickly took down the other knights to help Rukmini and Akna. Meanwhile, Luther sought information from Sir Drake about her brother's mission before his death, as Sir Drake had been Alfie's squire before becoming a knight. After freeing the others, Poe engaged in a fierce fight with Sir Drake on the speeding wagon. They eventually escaped by leaping from the train and continued on to the palace to meet the queen. Luther believed the queen might know about Alfie's mission to destroy the weapons. Poe and his friends sneaked into the palace but were soon discovered by Sir Drake, who ordered the knights to arrest them. In an attempt to shake off Sir Drake's pursuit, Poe and his friends split up to divert his attention. Luthera and the others found themselves in a room filled with chess-related items, while Poe accidentally entered a room where the queen was waiting for her next chess opponent. To avoid arousing suspicion from the queen and her two bodyguards, Poe pretended to be a skilled chess player, even though he had never played chess before. While Lethera and her friends hid from Sir Drake, Poe tried to gather information from the queen about Alfie's mission concerning the Chan Cheng weapons. The Queen, however, claimed she knew nothing about the mission and disclosed that Alfie's last assignment was to aid the residents of the town of Festermouth. Soon after, they heard guards outside the room searching for Poe. Instead of having him arrested, the Queen revealed his secret exit so that Poe and his friends could escape the palace without being detected by Sir Drake and the other knights. As Poe and his friends continued their journey to the town of Festermouth, Mr. Ping, who had just woken up, realized that Feruzan had deceived him. Instead of taking him to England, Feruzan had brought him to a remote island. On another note, two ship crew members were startled when they discovered Veruka, a notorious fugitive who had been on the run for years, inside the crate they were about to unload. Veruka, however, had seemingly exhausted her energy and passed out. They tied her up and planned to take her to the knights for trial. During a rest stop, Akna unintentionally made a comment about Alfie that upset Luthera, leading to an argument. Poe took the initiative to mediate and help Akna make amends with Luthera, but Rukmini believed he would only worsen the situation. After their journey, they finally reached the town of Festermouth, which was home to a horse named Edgar. Edgar had an unusual hobby of collecting dolls and talking to them. He informed Luthera and her friends that the Queen had sent knights to deal with a swamp monster that troubled the town's residents. However, these knights consistently left without completing the task, allowing the swamp monster to continue causing havoc. Leather, upon hearing this, decided to confront the swamp monster herself to uncover the truth about her brother. Upon reaching the swamp, they were immediately attacked by the swamp monster, which captured Poe and Rukmini. Luthera urged Akna to stay focused, and to everyone's surprise, Akna found the courage to fight back against the monster. Luthera and Akna faced off against the swamp monster, and though it initially had the upper hand, it suddenly stopped when Luthera mentioned the Chancheng weapons. This revelation led Luthera to realize that her brother Alfie had been tasked with destroying the Chanching weapons. The scene then shifted to the past, showing Alfie in a battle against a swamp monster named Duncan. Alfie had been assigned to kill Duncan due to his reign of terror, which stemmed from the town of Festermouth being built on the swamp where Duncan and his family had peacefully lived for thousands of years. The townspeople, however, saw Duncan as a threat to their new home and labeled him a monster. In contrast to the previous knights sent by the Queen, Alfie approached Duncan with empathy and listened to his grievances. Seeing Alfie's genuine concern, Duncan entrusted him with an important mission, 
making Alfie promise to allow him to live peacefully in the swamp in return. In the present, Luther questioned why Duncan had chosen Alfie for this mission, and he explained that only a truly great, courageous, and selfless knight could destroy the Tianxing weapons qualities he saw in Alfie. However, Duncan had doubts that Alfie might never obtain the Tianxing weapons and fail the mission. Luthera revealed that Alfie had indeed acquired the Storm Wheel. She inquired about how to destroy the weapons, but Duncan attacked them again. Poe and his friends then revealed that they had obtained the other weapons. Upon hearing this, Duncan allowed them to leave and disclosed that the Tianxing weapons could only be destroyed where they were made, in the ancient city of Tianxing. He explained that the ancient city had been buried and consumed by the ruins when the ancient masters brought about the world's destruction. Legend had it that the ruins of the ancient city of Tianxing lay beneath the city of London. Poe was surprised by Duncan's extensive knowledge, and Duncan revealed that his ancestors' souls were trapped within those weapons, indicating that he was a descendant of the ancient masters. Meanwhile, Verica woke up and found herself a prisoner of the two crew members who had discovered her. She easily broke free, defeated them, and set off to find Lethera. Having gathered information about Alfie and how to destroy the Tianxing weapons, Lethera and her friends returned to Festermouth. Lethera took the opportunity to make amends with Akna, offering her apologies for her earlier behavior. Akna was understanding and didn't hold any grudges as they both cared deeply for Alfie. Akna then inquired about their discovery of the ancient city of Tianxing. Luthera believed that her brother might have left a note with clues in his bedroom at their house. However, the thought of returning home made her uneasy as she dreaded facing her mother, whom she considered a different kind of monster. Shortly after, Edgar approached them, curious if they had successfully dealt with the swamp monster. Poe and his friends simply walked away without giving a response. On another note, Forozen and Mr. Ping finally arrived on an island where a group of squirrels attempted to steal their supplies. Instead of driving the squirrels away, Mr. Ping chose to flee with a chest, while Forozen commanded her pet sea beast to deal with the thieving squirrels on her ship. Some time later, Poe and his friends reached Luthera's house. Luthera asked them to wait outside while she sneaked into Alfie's bedroom to retrieve his journal. However, they decided to follow her inside, where they encountered Luthera's mother, Lady Lucinda. Luthera introduced them as her friends and Lady Lucinda warmly invited them to a tea party, having just finished baking biscuits. Poe eagerly accepted the invitation, both for the chance to taste English snacks and because he was feeling quite hungry. Surprisingly, Lady Lucinda turned out to be quite different from how Luthera had described her. She welcomed them warmly, even tolerating the less refined behavior of Poe and his friends, who were not nobles like Luthera. Lady Lucinda was strict with her daughter because Luthera aspired to become a knight like her brother Alfie. However, Lady Lucinda believed that noble women should act gracefully and politely, and she still saw Luthera as a girl who should adhere to these standards. In Alfie's room, Luthera and Poe managed to locate Alfie's journal, which contained valuable instructions about the ancient city of Tainsheng. But their search was interrupted when Sir Drake and his knights arrived intent on arresting Luthera and her friends. They hastily looked for something that could be used as a weapon. Lady Lucinda urged them to surrender to Sir Drake, but they refused and chose to stand their ground. Luthera easily outmaneuvered Sir Drake and swiped his smoke bomb. She used it to create a diversion, allowing them to escape from the scene. Outside, they encountered Colin, who was also fleeing. Luthera advised Colin not to become a knight like Sir Drake and the others. Sir Drake scolded Colin for letting Luthera and her friends escape, but Colin explained that he had been ordered to remain silent, regardless of the circumstances. Meanwhile, Mr. Ping and Feruzan attempted to evade a group of pursuing squirrels. They found themselves trapped at a dead end but were saved when Klaus came to their aid, guiding them to his ship. Mr. Ping believed that Klaus had saved them because he wanted the Tianjing weapons, but Klaus denied this and explained that these weapons had caused him great suffering. He urged Mr. Ping to take the weapons off the island as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Luthera and her friends reached London and attempted to find clues leading to the ancient city of Tianjing. Unfamiliar with the city's streets and buildings, they sought assistance from a cheeky comedian named Benny, they also showed him the mysterious symbol they were seeking. Benny claimed to know where they could find it, but instead tricked them into becoming part of his comedy act. While they did manage to earn some money from their performance, they ran into trouble when debt collectors appeared. Benny, however, chose to evade paying his debts. On another part of the island, Klaus agreed to help Mr. Ping and Forozen return to their ship. He cautioned them to secure the helmet because the leader of the squirrel group had set his sights on it. Klaus arrived at the beach ahead of them and attempted to distract the squirrels and their leader, Kyle. It turned out that Kyle knew Klaus because Klaus and his sister, Veruca, had once dropped Kyle from the air, leaving him seriously injured. Klaus managed to persuade Kyle and his associates to come with him. 
However, Mr. Ping and Firuzan unintentionally cause a ruckus, alerting Kyle to their presence and the helmet that was about to be stowed in the chest. Upon witnessing this, Kyle immediately ordered his men to attack Mr. Ping and Firuzan in their bid to seize the helmet. With Claw's assistance, Mr. Ping and Firuzan attempt to defend off Kyle's men, who were intent on taking the crate. Although Kyle briefly managed to acquire the helmet, Firuzan swiftly launched a counterattack, regaining control of the helmet and donning it. Empowered by the helmet's wind and magic, Firuzan encouraged Mr. Ping to fulfill his mission by journeying to England using her flying ship. Meanwhile, Poe and his companions race after Benny, who was attempting to elude the debt collectors. They eventually arrive at a cemetery area and engaged in a skirmish with the debt collectors. After emerging victorious in the battle, Benny led them through a secret passage beneath a skull-filled tomb, revealing a place where they could find the peculiar symbol mentioned in Alfie's journal. Lethera realized that the symbol served as the entrance to the ancient city of Tainsheng. Upon opening the door, they discovered a well leading to the old city. Benny chose to leave the place, while Peo and his friends ventured into the well. Upon reaching the well's depths, they were astonished by a universe drastically different from their own. What surprised them the most, however, was the unexpected presence of Lady Lucinda, who had secretly followed Luthera out of concern for her daughter. Lady Lucinda attempted to persuade Luthera to return home, but Luthera remained resolute in her determination to fulfill Alfie's mission. Meanwhile, Veruca, exhausted and hungry, reminisced about a past encounter with Alfie. During that encounter, Alfie had wielded one of the elemental weapons with immense magical power, and surprisingly he had vanished into thin air. In the present, Veruca finally reached Festermouth and confronted Duncan to extract information about Luthera and her friends. When Duncan noticed Veruca's use of magical powers similar to his own, he realized that she, like him, was a descendant of the ancient masters. This revelation excited Veruca further, as she believed the Tianxing weapons were rightfully hers. However, Duncan corrected her, explaining that they were descendants of the ancient masters who had taken the weapons to prevent them from destroying the world, not the ones who had created the weapons. Nevertheless, Verica remained determined to obtain the weapons for her own purposes, and pressed Duncan for the information he had shared with Luthera and her friends. Duncan refused as he had tasked Luthera and her friends with destroying the weapons, whereas Verica intended to use them for her own gain. On the other hand, Luthera and her friends faced challenges when Lady Lucinda and Rukmini were separated from the group, unable to control a floating rock that drifted perilously towards sharp, airborne rocks. Through coordinated efforts, they managed to rescue Lady Lucinda and Rukmini, reuniting the group. However, Luthera became angry with her mother for disrupting their journey. Unexpectedly, Lady Lucinda stumbled upon the location where the elemental weapons were forged. They discovered that Alfie hadn't destroyed the storm wheel there. Instead, he had created a new weapon, the sword now wielded by Sir Drake. Luthera believed that Alfie's soul remained trapped in the sword since he had been killed with it. Lady Lucinda proposed that they could potentially free Alfie's trapped soul from the sword, although Luthera had doubts. In a surprising twist, Lady Lucinda revealed her collaboration with Sir Drake to capture Luthera and her friends. While this revelation left Luthera irritated at her mother's willingness to conspire with Sir Drake against her, she saw an opportunity to seize Alfie's sword from Sir Drake. Shortly after that, Luthera informed Poe and his friends to head to the dock and await Mr. Ping and the weapons. She and her mother planned to return home and devise a strategy to acquire Alfie's sword from Sir Drake. Meanwhile, Poe and his friends faced difficulty finding their way to the pier and ended up lost in the city, obscured by thick fog. In their quest to reach the docks, Poe discovered they were now marked as fugitives by Sir Drake, who had ordered posters labeling them as wanted fugitives plastered all over London. As Sir Drake had offered a substantial reward of 1,000 gold coins to anyone capturing Poe and his friends, the city's residents were determined to catch them. Simultaneously, Mr. Ping arrived in London aboard the flying ship, but struggled to locate Poe and his friends amidst the dense fog. On the other hand, Luthera and Lady Lucinda managed to outsmart Sir Drake and secure Alfie's sword. Finally, Mr. Ping and Firuzan located Poe and his friends, assisting them in boarding the flying ship using a rope. Poe and Rukmini appeared irritated initially when Mr. Ping allowed Firuzan to utilize the helmet's power, but Firuzan demonstrated her ability to use it wisely to aid their escape. Meanwhile, Sir Drake managed to chase Luthera and her mother, cornering them on a rooftop. However, Poe and his friends arrived just in time to rescue them, taking them away aboard the flying ship. Subsequently, Luthera expressed her decision to let Alfie's soul remain confined within the sword, believing he needed eternal peace and that their safety should not be jeopardized. Poe understood and assured Luthera of his unwavering support for her choice. On the flip side, Poe came to understand that his father had genuine affection for Ferozen, so he made the decision to let Mr. Ping live with Forazen and find happiness together. 
Paul intended to continue his mission alongside Lithera and their friends. Initially, Mr. Ping hesitated to leave his son, worrying about Poe's well-being. However, he eventually realized that Poe had grown and could manage the mission independently. After bidding farewell to Mr. Ping and Ferozen, Poe and his friends returned to London to carry on with their mission of destroying the Chancheng weapons. The following day, the Queen was visibly furious at Sir Drake for turning Poe and his friends into fugitives. She called off the mission and instructed Sir Drake to organize her birthday celebration. Despite agreeing to the Queen's orders, Sir Drake secretly continued his mission to capture Luthera and her friends and seize the Tainxing weapons for his own schemes. Furthermore, Sir Drake ordered the knights to arrest Colin, labeling him a traitor for allegedly conspiring with Luthera. Sometime later, Luthera and her friends arrived in London, discovering that the knights had captured Colin. Luthera was determined to rescue Colin, considering him a trusted comrade from the beginning. Colin was surprised by Luthera's intervention and her invitation to join their quest to save the world. After they defeated the knights, Colin agreed to assist Luthera, especially since Sir Drake had stripped him of his knighthood and implicated him as an accomplice. On a different note, Poe attempted to explain to Lady Lucinda that they couldn't release Alfie's soul from the sword. However, he believed that Luthera should be the one to clarify this to her mother. Upon reaching the catacombs, Luthera finally conveyed to her mother that setting Alfie's soul free from the sword would equate to betraying him. Luthera explained that Alfie had sacrificed his life in an attempt to destroy the weapons and save the world. So she was determined to carry on Alfie's mission to destroy these weapons, fulfilling his noble intentions. Hearing this, Lady Lucinda understood Luthera's motivations and decided to support her daughter's decision, even though it meant never seeing her beloved son again. Aware that Sir Drake and his knights had tracked them to the catacombs, Poe handed the Tainxing weapons to Luthera, instructing her to destroy them while he and the others would confront Sir Drake and his knights. Unfortunately, Sir Drake caught up with Luthera and her mother as they headed to the location where the weapons were forged. He launched an attack with a bow, but Luthera managed to defend herself, albeit dropping some of her weapons in the process. Seeing this, Poe and his friends hurried to retrieve the weapons while Luthera confronted Sir Drake. They managed to grab the weapons and rushed to aid Lithera, but Sir Drake cornered them and demanded they surrender the weapons. In a surprising turn of events, Faruga, who had acquired their location from Duncan, attacked Sir Drake. She didn't hesitate to kill him right before their eyes and revealed she had also killed Duncan. Understanding they couldn't defeat Veruka, who possessed magic powers, Poe and his friends joined forces to distract her so they could escape. Colin took the initiative to attack Veruka and divert her attention, allowing Poe and his friends to make their getaway. However, Veruka quickly caught on and launched an attack, forcing Poe to use the elemental weapons to battle her. Poe managed to lead his friends away from Veruka, but she pursued them relentlessly, launching continuous attacks with her magical powers. After defeating Akna and capturing the storm wheel she had, Veruka went after Poe, who had the whip and gauntlet. She attempted to attack Poe with the storm wheel, but Luthera intervened, using Alfie's sword to deflect the assault. A fierce battle unfolded between Luthera and Veruka. Meanwhile, Lady Lucinda arrived first at the weapon's forging location and attempted to destroy the helmet. However, Veruka quickly thwarted her and seized the helmet and other weapons. She harnessed their power to summon the ancient army and ordered them to kill Poe and his friends. Lethera tried to reason with Alfie, who had been controlled by Veruka, to attack her. On the other hand, Veruka summoned Poe's teacher, Master Macedon, and manipulated him to attack Poe. As Luthera struggled against Alfie, Colin and the others arrived to aid Poe, urging him to save Luthera from Alfie's assault. Veruka attempted to incite Alfie to kill Luthera, but Poe intervened, revealing that Kloss was still alive. Veruka halted the ancient army's movements, including Alfie and Master Macedon, to interrogate Poe about Kloss. Poe explained that Luthera had spared Kloss and Mr. Ping had recently met with Kloss, who wanted to destroy the weapons because they had taken everything from him. Veruka was shocked to learn her brother was alive, but unexpectedly, Alfie regained his consciousness and swiftly killed Veruka with his sword. Alfie then approached Lethera, expressing his apologies for his previous attempt to harm her. Lethera, being understanding, didn't hold a grudge and warmly hugged Alfie. Lady Lucinda, filled with joy at reuniting with her son, embraced her children. Poe handed over the Chinching weapons to Alfie, expecting him to fulfill his mission. However, Alfie had a different plan in mind. Instead of destroying the weapons, he harnessed their power to mend the world that had been ravaged by the ancient masters, reconstructing it into a Pangaea-like state. Luthera confided in Poe, expressing her intention to persuade Alfie to reconsider and destroy the weapons. She then departed with Alfie and Lady Lucinda, leaving Poe and his friends to return to London. Upon their arrival, they were shocked to find the city in chaos due to the unstable weather caused by Alfie's newfound abilities. Seeing the distressed residents, 
Colin made the decision to return to the palace to fulfill his duty as the royal protector, safeguarding the queen and the British people. In light of this, Poe and his friends resolved to go their separate ways, each taking on a mission to save the world. They made a pact to reunite and assist Poe in stopping Alfie if Luthera's efforts to persuade her brother proved unsuccessful. Meanwhile, Poe journeyed to Mr. Ping while Alfie invited Luthera to address disasters occurring worldwide, even though these catastrophes were in reality caused by Alfie himself. During his journey home, Poe paid a visit to the Emperor's palace, where he was reinstated as the Dragon Master and entrusted with the task of saving China. This news filled Poe with immense joy as he continued his journey homeward. On the other hand, Luthera began to realize that her brother had undergone a transformation as Alfie no longer hesitated to resort to violence to assert his control over the new world he had fashioned. Realizing her inability to convince Alfie to change his course, Luthera made the decision to track down Poe and develop a strategy to confront Alfie and dismantle the Chancheng weapons. Meanwhile, Poe returned home where he found Mr. Ping and Forozen now living with his father. He appeared disheartened, blaming himself for the disasters and turmoil that had gripped the world due to his perceived failure. Later, Luthera arrived at Poe's home, discovering him in a state of frustration and guilt. She made various efforts to uplift his spirits, even feigning cheerfulness in his presence to help him regain his enthusiasm. Concurrently, Poe grappled with his dark side, Op, which sought to perpetuate his feelings of pessimism and hopelessness. Mr. Ping assigned Poe and Luthera the task of collecting chili plants along the riverbank. Upon reaching the location, they noticed that the river had receded due to Alfie's influence. While Luthera initially thought the task would be straightforward, Poe warned her about the poisonous plants deep within the ravine, capable of temporarily paralyzing them. In an unfortunate turn of events, they were inadvertently exposed to the poison. However, this experience prompted Poe to realize that he had squandered too much time dwelling on guilt. Upon their return home, Poe, now reinvigorated and confident, explained to Luthera the history of the ancient masters who crafted the Chansheng weapons. He emphasized the urgency of assembling the Dragon Knights for their final mission. Op reappeared, attempting to sow doubt and worry, but this time, Poe had come to terms with his darker side, rendering Op powerless and eventually causing Op to disappear. Soon after, Poe assigned Luthera to go pick up Ruck Mini while he headed to Tickle to retrieve Acne. Their goal was to regroup the Dragon Knights and devise their next plan. Upon reaching Tickle, Poe and Acne joined forces to overcome the demon army stationed there by Alfie. It was noteworthy that Alfie had even ordered the demon army to punish anyone engaging in physical violence, even if it appeared to be mere play fighting. Meanwhile, Luther abandoned her initial intention to recruit Rukmini, recognizing that Rukmini now had a loving family. Nevertheless, Rukmini emphasized her commitment to rejoin them, driven by her determination to protect her cherished family and ensure the world's safety. In short, they reunited and began outlining their strategy to confront Alfie. During their discussions, they realized they needed someone capable of wielding elemental magic, akin to Duncan and Veruka. Akna noted that the only other person with such abilities besides Duncan and Veruka was Claus, while they deliberated their plan, Colin appeared, providing information about Mage Island, Claw's current residence. Colin then took them to a restaurant where they encountered their informant, Wyman, who disclosed the island's location. After leaving the diner, two demon soldiers apprehended Wyman and brought him before Alfie. Faced with Alfie's threats, Wyman revealed Luthera and her friend's quest to find Claw's on Mage Island. This revelation left Alfie pondering their intentions as he ordered the demon army to capture Claw's before they could locate him. In short, the demon army made it to Mage Island to capture Claus and simultaneously, Poe and his friends reached the island using a vehicle crafted by Acna, called the Scorpions. They advised Claus to hide, but Alfie sent Veruka to lure Claus out, leading to the demon army capturing him. Witnessing this, Poe and his friends tried to rescue Claus and battled the demon soldiers. Surprisingly, the demons kept coming back even after being defeated several times. Fortunately, Colin figured out a way to temporarily stop the demon soldiers by trapping them in an ice lake, allowing Poe and his friends to escape. While attempting to convince Klaus to join their fight against Alfie, Mr. Ping and Feruzen executed their plan by separately meeting with the Chinese Emperor and the Queen of England, inciting them to wage war against each other. The next day, Klaus remained puzzled about what Poe and his friends wanted from him, believing he lacked magic powers like his sister. However, Poe believed Klaus possessed magical abilities similar to Veruka, even though Claus was unaware of this potential. Poe instructed Luthera and the others to search for food while he attempted to help Claus unlock his hidden powers. Poe took Claus to a cave and asked him to meditate, aiming to explore his untapped potential. Instead of achieving a blank mental state, Claus guided Poe through memories of their childhood when he and Virga lived on the streets of London. 
On another note, Luthera finally realized that Colin had romantic feelings for her after Akna and Rukmini pointed it out. Initially, she tried to deny it, but as she recalled Colin's behavior, Luthera couldn't find any other explanation for his actions. As Luthera and her friends searched for food in the forest, they encountered a group of female bears collecting mushrooms. The bears initially seemed friendly and invited them to lunch, offering mushroom soup. However, things took a strange turn when Colin arrived. The female bears suddenly became aggressive and fixated on Colin because he was the only male they had seen in the forest. They surrounded him and tried to get close, prompting Akna to urge Luthera to help Colin. On another note, Po finally realized that Klaus possessed wind magic powers. Klaus had been unknowingly connected to the element of wind and had used these powers to search for Veruka. Po explained to Klaus that he had been so focused on finding Veruka that he had forgotten about his own unique qualities. This realization prompted Klaus to concentrate on harnessing his powers to connect with the ancient masters through elemental magic. Shortly after, Klaus succeeded in summoning the spirit of the ancient masters, who provided Poe with instructions to locate Rocky, the rock monster. Meanwhile, the group of aggressive female bears posed a threat to Colin, with intentions of physical harm. Luthera and her friends rushed to rescue Colin, reaffirming his status as their comrade. After saving Colin from the bears, they rejoined Poe and Klaus to discuss their next steps. Thanks to Klaus' wind magic, they finally pinpointed Rocky's location and attempted to enter the rock monster's body, which contained immense magical energy. After entering Rocky's body, Klaus concentrated to reconnect with the ancient masters. Meanwhile, Poe explained to the ancient masters the situation caused by the misuse of the Chen weapons. However, Alfie began searching Poe's house to uncover their plans. Lady Lucinda found notes about their plan to summon the ancient masters and tried to hide them from Alfie. But Alfie realized his mother's support for Luthera and her friends seized the notes and ordered the demon army to send Lady Lucinda home. On the other hand, the ancient masters revealed to Poe and his friends that the Tianxing weapons were not meant to unite the world because they could disrupt its stability and even destroy the universe. They explained that they could use their last strength together to destroy the weapons. But first, Poe and his friends had to free Master Mastodon because he was a part of them. Upon hearing this, Luthera grew pessimistic, believing their mission was impossible as Master Mastodon was under Alfie's control. Meanwhile, Rukmini asked Rocky to move to clear the path for the villagers. She initially thought the rock monster would ignore her, even though she had spent 30 years trapped inside him. Surprisingly, Rocky recognized Rukmini, calling her mother and obeying her request to move. That night, Poe encouraged Luthera to find the courage to confront her brother Alfie. He explained that they only needed to steal one weapon to break Alfie's control over Master Macedon. Then they could gather the ancient masters to destroy the weapons and prevent the destruction of their world. Luthera regained her confidence and they rushed to execute their next plan. The next day, Akna gave Luthera a sword tailored to her abilities, making Luthera very happy. She thanked Akna for crafting the sword. With Rocky's help and a special tool from Akna, Poe and his friends hurried to continue their plan of distracting Alfie and stealing the Chinching weapons to break his control over Master Macedon. On the other hand, British and Chinese troops were prepared for a battle. However, Master Macedon and the Dark Army arrived to prevent the war on Alfie's orders. At the same time, Poe reached the location and readied himself to execute his plan while waiting for Luthera and her friends to do their part. Meanwhile, Luthera and her friends reached Luthera's house, which Alfie had been using as an operation base. Luthera confronted Alfie, Rukmini, and the others as they attempted to steal a weapon. However, Alfie quickly caught onto their plan. He took them outside the house and threatened to drop them from the sky, despite Akna trying to explain the potential destruction of the universe due to Alfie's destabilization of the elements. But Alfie insisted that he had repaired the world, and it would now follow his desires. On the battlefield, Master Macedon and the Dark Army started attacking the soldiers including Pippo and Colin, who were trying to help. Poe nearly got hit by Master Macedon, but surprisingly, the attack suddenly stopped. Lady Lucinda had managed to snatch Alfie's sword. She told Alfie to halt his actions because they had gone too far even causing harm to others due to his obsession with the Chinjing weapon's power. Simultaneously, Akna managed to snatch the helmet, causing Alfie to lose control of his floating base. Poe left with Master Macedon, who had regained consciousness to execute their next plan. Soon after, Alfie regained the helmet, but Rukmini got hold of the whip and launched a counterattack. Klaus joined in to assist and distract Alfie so Luthera could grab the storm wheel. While Alfie and Luthera battled fiercely in the sky, Klaus hurried to a quieter place to summon the ancient masters. Shortly afterward, Poe and Master Mastodon arrived and launched an attack to support Luthera. However, Alfie easily reversed their attack and reacquired the weapons. 
Additionally, Alfie summoned the Dark Army back to his base causing chaos on Earth due to the worsening destabilization of the elements. Residents fled in panic, hoping that the Dragon Knights could complete their mission to save the world. Alfie then ordered the Dark Army to stop Claus from summoning the Ancient Masters. Luthera rushed to rescue Claus, prompting Alfie to attack her. They engaged in a fierce battle. Seeing Luthera struggling, Poe stepped in to help, but they found it challenging to compete with Alfie and his Tanjang weapons. Meanwhile, Rukmini and the others tried to evade the Dark Army's attacks, but were eventually pushed back and captured. Fortunately, Poe managed to turn the tide by seizing Alfie's sword, causing him to lose control of the Dark Army. While Veruca helped Klaus summon the Ancient Masters, Poe and Luthera continued their intense battle against Alfie. They initially gained the upper hand, but were ultimately overpowered by Alfie. Alfie intended to harm Luthera, but Lady Lucinda arrived to protect her daughter. Surprisingly, Alfie pushed his mother aside, though he seemed to regret it in the end. Upon witnessing his mother's injury at the hands of Alfie, Luthera immediately sprang into action to shield Lady Lucinda. She approached Alfie with determination, urging him to put an end to this chaos. Alfie, still ridden with guilt for harming his mother, became filled with fear, especially as he beheld the world below descending into turmoil. He believed the ancient masters were behind the chaos, but they clarified that it was the destructive consequences of the changing weapons they had created, prompting their decision to destroy them. Realizing his mistake, Alfie finally admitted his wrongdoing and apologized to Luthera for everything that had unfolded. After handing the Chiangjing weapons to Poe, they beseeched the Ancient Masters to destroy these dangerous artifacts. Regrettably, the Ancient Masters revealed that it was too late, and the impending destruction of the entire universe was inevitable. Refusing to give up, Poe proposed an alternative plan. He suggested that the Ancient Masters employ the weapons to redivide the world as they had done before in order to restore balance to the universe. Poe assembled the Dragon Knights, including Colin, and distributed the weapons among them, so that they could harness their power alongside the Ancient Masters. Verduka, knowing that her spirit would be freed from the weapon, bid farewell to Klaus and embraced him. Alfie, too, said his goodbyes to Luthera and his mother. With the Dragon Knights uniting the power of the weapons, the Ancient Masters summoned their last ounce of strength to obliterate the weapons and restore the elements, returning the entire continent to its rightful state. Sometime later, Luthera received an invitation to the palace, the Queen wanted to honor her with the titles of Head of Knights and Master of War for her heroic deeds in saving the world. But unexpectedly, Luthera decided to step down from her knightly role, feeling she didn't fully fit the knight's qualifications. Instead, she handed these titles to Colin, who always upheld the moral values of a true knight. Meanwhile, Akna returned to her hometown and embarked on a new passion, crafting toys. Rukmini, now reunited with her family, followed her longing for thrilling adventures and became a pirate queen. Mr. Ping and Firuzin capitalized on Poe and the Dragon Knight's fame, drawing numerous customers to their nouveau shop. The animated series concluded with Poe and Luthera reminiscing about their journey to destroy the Tianjin weapons and save the world. Rather than being on a mission to protect the world from destruction, Poe and Luthera now spent their time traveling to different places, savoring the various famous dishes each destination had to offer. The series conveyed a valuable moral message that nobody is entirely good or evil. Each person possesses both light and dark aspects, emphasize the importance of embracing these aspects within ourselves and extending understanding to others, recognizing our own dualities. This way, we can foster better connections and understanding among one another.